feel like the perfect Disney park day with your littles is completely unrealistic and out of reach, well here are 10 tips plus a bonus one for <clears throat> tantrums that I have for you at the end to get you a little bit closer to perfection. Now these are in no particular order, but tip number one is to have everyone in your family pick their favorite attraction. Now we are a family of four, and so that means we have four attractions picked for each park day. That way when you're walking out of Magic Kingdom or whatever park you were in for the day, you're happy, you can look back and say, oh, today was magical, we did exactly what I wanted to do today in this park. It was fantastic, because let's be honest, saying that you're going to ride every ride in Magic Kingdom, even without your two-year-old, is really a huge feat. Mm -hmm. Tip number two is scope out places to relax. Now, as you're going about your day, be sure to kind of keep an eye out for some different little places that you can play. Now, I have a videos on all the different parks, which I will have linked in the description box below if you need ideas of things to do with your littles at each of the parks. But have an idea in each one where you can at least take one good break, whether it's mom and dad grabbing a Starbucks or in our case, a Joffrey's coffee and a donut and sitting and relaxing, letting the kids get their wiggles out, have some stroller free time, some holding free time, baby wearing free time, whatever it is. They need a break and they need to move. Like at home, they're crawling and they're playing and they're running. Give them a little of that normalcy at Disney World because it's just extra fun there. And so be sure to factor some pit stops in throughout your day. Tip number three is to pick only one table service meal. And the reason I say this is when you're traveling as a family, you can bank on your table service meal taking about 90 minutes of your day. Now I know in the grand scheme of things, if the park is open for 15 hours, then yeah, that's not exactly bad to take away an hour and a half of that. But if you do that three times throughout the day because you do breakfast, and lunch and dinner at a sit down meal, that's a lot of time that's eaten into meeting characters and hugging Mickey and riding the teacups and all the things that your family may wanna pack into the day. So quick services are a little bit, obviously, hence the name, quicker. And so you can kind of buzz in and out of those a little bit faster. And so it allows you more time in your day for other things besides sitting and eating. Tip number four is have a plan for naps. How is your little one going to nap? Whether you've started before vacation and you have practiced nap time in the stroller, whether you went to the park or the store or whatever, and you have a whole game plan, know what you're going to do. If you're going to be the family, that stops in the middle of the day and you go back to your resort or your hotel or your Airbnb to let your kid nap, then have a plan for that. Know that it's gonna take you 30 minutes to get back to your resort and so allow that amount of time okay they nip typically we want them to nap at one o'clock and so we need to be heading towards the park gate at about 12 30 and so have that all planned out and know how your kid is going to nap Tip number five is have your top priorities written down. So we talked about having everyone pick their favorite attraction. What I like to do is start a note on my phone and just have it as a checklist, just like this right over here. That way it's not this big overwhelming Excel spreadsheet or something that you're just like, oh my God, you're nerding out and stressed out in the middle of Magic Kingdom. You just have your checklist of, okay, these are the things we want to accomplish. These are our top priorities. We gotta get this done. And so you can have this for your family and then you can just, as you go through your day, check those things off and have a great time. That way you don't forget something because in all the planning and excitement of home, you have your list of things to do. But sometimes when you get to the park, all of that goes out the window because you see so many things that it's like, oh, I want to do it all. Well, sadly, you can't do it all. Like even the best Disney planner and expert cannot do everything in one park in one day. Like it's literally impossible. So having this definitely helps. It keeps you focused that way when you're walking down Main Street and you're thinking about all the fun you had that day and how tired your feet are, you can look back and say, oh, I got to do everything. I got to that snack that I really wanted and I got to ride the ride I really wanted to go on and we took that picture and oh honey, look at the picture of us in front of the castle or look at them with the hugging Mickey or whatever that magical moment is for your family. That way you get to have that exciting day that you've been counting down for for how many ever days your countdown was. <laughs> Tip number six is quiet time. Now, if your toddler is past napping or if they're like my toddler and where as a baby, they would nap in the stroller, but as a toddler, 
she doesn't want to miss a thing so we're staying awake so we choose to have some quiet time now we'll do this on the hub grass we'll take the monorail to a nearby resort if we're at epcot we can take and go out international gateway and go to either beach club or boardwalk where they have some grassy areas some nice places to sit down it's a little quieter a little more relaxed so if you can kind of scope out that kind of spot look on the map you can see places that it's like oh that would be a great spot to just chill and so let the kids play whether it's coloring just some little quiet simple activities Disney is a lot Disney is very stimulating for most people and so this gives them that little bit of a reset that they need and while yes this tip is similar to taking a snack break or a nap break if you're not getting those or you've already had a snack break those are usually a little quicker you sit down you eat your snack and you keep going and you're on to the next attraction but this I would carve out like 45 minutes even take an hour to do this and we will do this and I know that sounds crazy when you're at Disney because you're like oh I want to get all these rides in I don't want to do all of this it definitely helps to sit down just soak in where you're at let your kids do some simple things like I said it just it helps so have some quiet time tip number seven is pack your patience while yes this is a video all about having the perfect Disney day there are going to be bumps in the road. It's going to rain. Your kid's gonna get tired. They're gonna get hungry. You're gonna need to stop and take a break. There's gonna need to be bathroom breaks. People are going to get cranky. They're gonna be overstimulated. There's just going to be a lot going on and your senses are going to be going crazy and sometimes that makes our emotions go crazy. And so you don't wanna be that family bickering in line. So be sure to pack your patience, slow down, just no we have our top priorities we're doing that and we are so excited when we get our top priorities done and anything else beyond that is great but just pack your patience because it's a lot <laughs> and tip number i did not think this through okay tip number eight this is how we're gonna do this tip number eight is to take your pictures early if you want that beautiful picture with the sunrise in front of the tree of life at animal kingdom or you want the perfect picture with the epcot ball or the castle or the grauman's chinese theater or whatever it is that you want your picture in front of take that one early prioritize the picture yes i know those early morning hours and your genie plus and all that stuff that's important too but if you don't capture the moment i find when you look back on it i know for me if i didn't get that picture i've caught myself so many times walking down main street leaving the park it is dark you're not getting a great picture at that point in the day. It's not the what you look, wanted. Everybody's wrinkled, they're covered in sweat. Your makeup is just not where it was this morning. And so that can be a little disappointing. So I definitely highly recommend take those pictures first off. Anybody that you follow on Instagram that has that perfect little family photo where they're not sweating and they look glorious, yeah, they took that first thing in the morning. That is a photo taking hack from any influencer that takes pictures at Disney take them early, early, early. Prioritize it. <laughs> tip number nine is plan for snacks. Now this one comes from my husband and it's really, it's a great tip because how many times have you filled up on a meal at Disney because the portions were huge and you just, you wanted everything or you were on the dining plan or whatever the case was and you just ate so, so much that when you got out of your reservation, you were out, you're walking around and you see the Mickey ice cream sandwich or the churro or the Joffrey's donut or the Cheshire cattail or the cronut or whatever it is that you're like, oh, Disney snack is like your thing, whatever it is. How many times have you missed out on eating that snack because you filled up at the restaurant and so this is also a little bit of a money saving hack is we like to split you can do this at Disney restaurants now not at buffets and all you can eat like family style you cannot do it there but at a restaurant where you sit down you look at the menu you place your order we totally do this we love to do this like even at Tony's on Main Street that is one place that we like always split we get the chicken parm and we split it but that is our go-to and so that way when we get out we can go over to Adventure and get a Dole Whip or a Citrus Swirl or whatever it is and you can have some of those unique Disney snacks because let's be honest even the dessert portion of most Disney restaurants isn't like the dessert that most people crave it's the one out at the quick service or the walk-up stand or whatever those are the like mm, 
chef's kiss 10 out of 10 desserts that you dream about having at Disney. So don't forget to save a little room for that if you're having a quick service order off the kids meal. And you can do that. Save some money and have some room for those desserts too so that you can kind of watch and not be so full that you can't have that coveted snack you've been dreaming of. And tip number 10 is to bring your stroller. I cannot tell you how many families I have heard and couples bickering about next time we're not bringing a stroller. Durr, durr, durr. I've heard that <laughs> so many times and I just don't do it. No, don't, don't do it. Please don't do that. Please, please bring your stroller. Please bring your stroller. Because nine times out of 10, you are going to either have a very, very whiny child that is not used to walking 10 miles in a theme park because, I mean, let's be honest, are you used to walking 10 miles? I have my Apple Watch and I don't walk 10 miles in a day except for when I'm in Disney. So if you're not used to that, your kid's probably not used to that. Are you prepared to listen to the whining that is going to ensue because they cannot take their break of cruising from attraction to attraction? in their stroller. I don't think you're prepared for that whining. And then also when all of that gets to just be too much for you to handle as a parent and you are just emotionally drained and you've like had it up to here, you're probably going to end up going to the front of the park and renting one of those terribly uncomfortable plastic strollers for your child. You're going to spend more money and they're still going to be uncomfortable because let's face it, have you seen those things? They're like not comfortable at all. So take your stroller. I don't care if you are getting looks because your eight year old is in a stroller. You do you and your family. And if that's what you need to do and your child needs that assistance, let them have it. It's okay. You're never going to see those people again anyway. So it's not a big deal. Just do what's best for you and your family. And my bonus tip or tip number 11 is for mitigating toddler tantrums. Well, if you've not experienced one, count your blessings but don't think you're not gonna probably have one because you will. Um, we have not had a ton, but we've had, the ones that we've had have been a little rough. And a lot of times it's simply because our child's basic needs aren't met. If your child is hungry or they're thirsty, because typically at home, they're able to come to you and say, hey, mommy, I want a snack. But sometimes, I know my daughter gets this way, she gets so distracted with playing and riding rides and running around and watching the cavalcades go by that she doesn't ask for those things like she typically would if we were at home. And so be the parent, know your child and know that, okay, right around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, that's usually when we have snack time at home. So be sure to have a snack time for them. Make sure to continue to offer that water so they stay hydrated and you don't have a depleted and dehydrated child because that is not fun to have. And so those things really, really help. If your child takes a nap, offer it, whether you want them to do it in the stroller, you want to go back to the room, try to offer that nap. While they may not always accept it, you can always at least offer it and it's our job as parents to at least offer the nap. Again, if your child doesn't want to take a nap, quiet time, quiet time. I talked about that earlier, but that can be your best friend. So all of these things help to mitigate those toddler tantrums throughout the day. And honestly, if it happens, just remember, breathe, the people around you that may or may not be giving you those judging looks or you've got your hands full. God, I hate that one. I hate that. You've got your hands full. Thanks, Karen. Obviously, I, you're not helping anybody. I, I hate that. Can you tell? Can you tell I hate that when people tell me that? You've got your hands full. And so you're, nobody's helping. But the thing is, you're not going to see any of those people ever again. So what they think about you and if you're feeling judged about your parenting or being able to control your child or whatever the case is, whatever your fears and whatever like self-doubt that you have popping into your head, it doesn't matter. Just ignore them. They are passing by. They're just a flicker of life that you will no longer see. So it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. And just remember when that tantrum is over in five, 10, 15 minutes, your child will bounce back faster than you will. So while you may be emotionally drained and you're like, Oh my God, I do not want to finish this. I just want to go back to the resort. I'm done. I've had it to here and you've let it ruin your entire day. That little person is going to be happy and they're going to be like, Oh my gosh, there's Mickey. And just 
Like nothing ever happened. Like they just bounced back so fast. Kids are emotionally resilient, at least most of them are. And so don't let it ruin your day and drain the magic from you. If you need to, after all that, okay, it is time for our Joffrey's coffee and our donut break. Like we're gonna go sit on the hub grass for a minute or we're gonna go let you play in the splash pad or at the playground. And mommy and daddy need a minute. And so take that minute, recharge, but don't let it ruin your day. I know that is so much easier said than done. And I am preaching to the choir here because I've totally let it happen to me. But just breathe, just breathe. It's gonna be okay. And you are not the first and only person. You're not, listen, you're not special. You, your child is not the only one to have a meltdown in the middle of Magic Kingdom. That is my TED talk on toddler tantrums and how to avoid them. I know everybody handles their children differently and parents differently, but either way, you've got this, you can do this. You can have a best Disney day and make it your own. Just know that the best and perfect Disney day for you is gonna to be totally different and that's okay. So we all have our own Disney style, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below, as well as if you are new here and you love tips, tricks, and hacks for traveling to Disney World with your toddler or baby, as well as if you love motherhood content and Disney vlogs, because we've got those coming, be sure to hit the red subscribe button down below and I will see you guys right back here in the next one. Bye you guys.